Tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny, two young women at opposite ends of the eating scale, both obsessed with food. I like stuff to be like a party in my mouth. They'll be forced to face tough truths. I've never seen myself like this. Look hard at the possible future. And I'm frightened I'm going to lose you. And Maddie won't have a mum. And break free of their emotional ties with food. I'm going to show you a bit of cartilage. Plus, the flab fighters are battling a bevy of calories. Kel surprise, Donna and Bev doing absolutely nothing. And Anna prepares for a photo shoot, Hollywood style. You look so skinny right here. And in the final week of therapy for anorexia, the girls go through their biggest challenge yet. You literally are just abusing your body. The only thing you're driven by is just starving yourself. Welcome to Super Size versus Super Skinny. Super Skinny Charlotte is obsessed with her looks to the complete detriment of her diet. Food's just not that important to me. I'd rather think about my nails or my tan. But despite wanting to enhance her womanly charms, she eats like a seven-year-old. My dinners, compared to all my other family members, just look ridiculous. For the next five days, Charlotte will be checked into the feeding clinic. Overseeing proceedings is Dr Christian Jessen. She's undergone a full physical to ensure she's up to the challenge ahead. So you are 157 centimetres. An average woman of 5 feet 2 inches should tip the scales at 8 stone 4. You are exactly 87 pounds. That is one of the smallest weights I have yet seen. At 6 stone 3, Charlotte's more than 2 stone underweight. My ribs stick out a bit too much. My shoulders, it looks like the bone's going to pop out. It looks really horrible. Super skinny 19-year-old Charlotte dreams of being a glamour model. I want to be on boys' bedroom walls. That is just my dream. I just, I want people to look up to me and think, oh, she's really beautiful. But despite wanting the body of a woman, her diet is that of a child. When I look down on the plate, I know that there's not enough there. I think it is quite embarrassing. I just feel really stuffed and I feel like I can't breathe, like I need to take really deep breaths. And her dreams of being a busty pin-up are falling flat. These things, whatever you want to call it, I think they are too small. Charlotte's shocking diet has left her with a child-sized body. When I give Charlotte a cuddle and I hold her in my arms, it just feels like I'm just cuddling a bag of bones and it worries me. I do find it hard to get clothes. If I can't find anything that will fit in a women's section, then, then I do have to go to the kids' section. I've got age 12 shorts and I had to get those because the size 6 just fell off me completely. I feel embarrassed. Your BMI turns out to be 15.4, right. which is really underweight. A BMI of 15, really, you'd give to people with eating disorders. You are in for big trouble if you keep going the way you are. The health implications of being the way you are are significant and severe. Charlotte's diet is killing her ambitions of being a curvy glamour girl. It's time to bring in her feeding buddy. Hi, Heather. Hi, yeah. I'm Dr. Jessen. Nice to meet you. Come along in. Step forward 22 year old Heather from Sheffield, who, at 20 stone, is a frightening 10 stone overweight. I love food. I love trying different foods, unless it's vegetables. I like stuff to be like a party in my mouth. I don't think Heather knows what hunger is. I don't think she's ever been in a situation where she's not eaten because she's constantly nibbling all the time. Heather, a full-time working mum, lives with husband Richard and their daughter Madison. But while this call centre worker loves her nosh, she hates cooking. I don't find cooking in any way, shape or form entertaining at all. If I'm having a bit of a low day, I, like, tend to sit and eat whatever, so, like, chocolate and ice cream. And let's see how much you weigh. All right, so jump on. You are exactly 280 pounds. Now, is that a lot for you? It's a lot. That's a lot? Yeah. OK, climb off. 
this classic comfort eater picked up her terrible eating habits from her mum as a child. Working and being a mum of three, we did tend to eat a lot of rubbish, things that were quick to do. And the generational dietary disaster looks set to continue. Heather's already passing it on to 16-month-old daughter, Madison. She wants the food that we eat. She won't eat her own food anymore. I think because Heather doesn't like vegetables, she gives Madison what she eats, and I don't think that's a good thing at all. Everything's choc choc, which is pretty bad that she's picked up on what choc choc is. I don't want her to be like me. I really don't want her to get bullied at school. If she goes to school fat, it's because I've done it. Nobody else. I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to be the skinny girl that's inside that I keep shitting up with chocolate. This hereditary supersized cycle has got to stop. At 20 stone, 22-year-old Heather has almost a stone in weight for every year of her life. And your BMI is already 46.6, which is, well, over double what it should be. What do you think causes this? Is it just bad eating or what? Um, yeah, I'd say it's bad eating. I don't eat stuff that's good for me. These two young women are destroying their bodies with extreme diets at opposite ends of the scale. And with nearly 14 stone difference between them, the signs are obvious. Heather's thigh is almost six inches bigger than Charlotte's waist. They're about to swap diets for five days. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Stone four at the moment. Completely. Feels really awful <laughs> to look at you like that. It's just I've never seen anybody so skinny. That's gonna change, definitely. I had no fat pinch and she could just grab it like a whole handful and say like which bit do you want? I did think like how can you get to that size? You know, like how much are you actually eating? It's quite scary to look at somebody so tiny and I'm just dreading exactly where she eats to stay so small. I'm really frightened. <laughs> Wait no longer, ladies. It's time for them to come face to face with their own shocking weekly food intake. Charlotte, we're going to start with you. Yeah. Cereal to start with. Toast. There's a corner missing from every single one of these pieces of toast. Why is that? I think half of it's habit, and the other half is that I just I stop eating once I'm not hungry anymore. Also with this, you tend to have those probiotic yoghurt drinks. Let's see what you have for lunch. Usually just have one biscuit with a cup of tea. And that's pasta salad? Yeah. Let's have a look at your dinners. That's the first lot of veg we've had in the tube. Desserts with this lot? No, I never really have anything after my dinner. That is your week's worth of dinner and your week's worth of lunch and your week's worth of breakfast in there. But it's just really not enough to get you through the day, is it? I'm beginning to panic at how my body is going to survive on that small amount of food. To keep her body at full strength, Charlotte should be consuming 2,000 calories a day, but she's only taking on board a woeful 800. That's an under-eat of four days a week. Heather, let's start with your breakfast. Bread with cream cheese. How many pieces of bread? Uh, four. Four at a time? Yeah. That is really worrying. That looks like a traditional English fry-up breakfast. Wow, like a French baguette, and that's a breakfast thing. Charlotte, that is 30 sausage rolls. Anything else for dinner? Tiny takeaway. With chicken fried rice. And a burger. Yeah, that was like a snack type thing. And last thing, looks like chocolate cake. Tell me what this is. Cider. And this is fizzy cola. So it's high sugar, yeah. high in calorie, just not really quite what you need given the size of your lunches and the size of your dinners. Oh my God, I can't believe the amount of food that went in there. I feel stuffed already. Heather is gorging on five times more calories than Charlotte. By taking in a mammoth 4,100 a day, She's eating twice as much as she needs to. It's an overeat of seven days a week. Coming up, the flab fighters tackle their booze bellies. We will burn off around 150 calories, which is equivalent to a glass of wine. Our super skinny has her beauty myths exposed. I've never seen myself like this. 
and Heather reaches breaking point on Charlotte's mini meals. I actually feel sick because I'm that hungry. Welcome to my flab fighting club. Over the last eight weeks, this gang of gals from Newport have been fighting the flab my way. I've tackled their worst food vices, from cheese to chocolate. I eat chocolate because it replaces my lack of sex. Pizza to cake. I love cake so much. Using calorie-busting activities with a twist. Was all that cake eating worth this pain? Today, I'm taking on this lot's final and possibly biggest vice, booze. Yeah. All right, ladies, I think it's fair to say that we all like a tipple. Fuckers, the balls. Anything else, Trace? Might have a bottle of wine, might have a lager. OK, so a bottle of wine, lager as well. I like a glass of wine, glass of bread. We all know it is unbelievably calorific. In order to burn off all of that drinking, you may have noticed we're at Brands Hatch here, and I have got behind me seven very dirty cars. Vigorous hand washing of mucky cars over half an hour, we will burn off around 150 calories, which is equivalent to a glass of wine. Anybody want a glass of wine today? Yeah. yeah. Picky car now. Now, I'm not recommending you burn off a binge drinking session, but if you'd like to indulge in the occasional tipple, no more than two units a day for women or four for men, you can offset the calories with my flab fighting activity. <laughs> Kel Surprise, Donna and Bev doing absolutely nothing. See, so if you do it properly, seriously, it's pretty aerobic cleaning a car. It's definitely working your arms, it's definitely working your upper body, you are burning calories. You're not sitting around talking like certain other people I could mention. Every shot of Zambuca, you'll need to earn 103 calories, which is 21 minutes of vigorous soaping. A double vodka and regular tonic clocks in at 143 calories, or 29 minutes of car washing. Whilst a pint of sweet cider with a mega 250 calories will see you scrubbing the bonnet for a good 50 minutes. Right. You may notice that on my tray there are five glasses of wine. That's simply because some of us, more than others, have been working. Jack, would you like yours? Tracy did really well. And you get a glass as well. Carol Ann, your car is definitely the cleanest. There you go. And Karen gets one as well. And Tracy. <laughs> Guess who doesn't? <laughs> Guess who doesn't? This lot were actually washing. Yay. Now look, most of us love a tipple, but if you spend the whole evening drinking, that is equivalent to a whole day's worth of food. Is it really worth it? Go! Over the last eight weeks, my ladies have delivered a mixed bag of effort towards their flab fighting mission, but despite the occasional bit of slacking, between them they've lost in total an impressive five stone in weight. I'm really enjoying um, the feeling of losing weight, and that now is more important than a biscuit. I've learned that you can have what you want as long as you exercise. You really do need to do the exercise so as you can eat what you want to eat. I feel so much more happier in myself and the way I look, definitely. It gives me confidence to look better, you know, to dress better. Yeah, I'm really chuffed with it. Now that I know what I have to do, it's about sticking to it and I know that I can lose more. I do feel really proud of myself and I'm really proud of all the girls. Well done, flab fighters. Coming up, more weight loss LA style as I discover Hollywood body cheats. All right, excuse me. Super skinny Charlotte tips the scales at just six stone three. She's a control freak about food, eating just 800 calories a day. She swapped diets with super-sized 20 stone Heather. It's their first night in the feeding clinic. On the menu for Charlotte is a three-course banquet of deep-fried cheese with onion marmalade, 
followed by meatballs and garlic bread, washed down with cider and full-fat cola. And for dessert, just half a gatto. For Heather, well, it's a baby-sized bowl of pasta with veg. Do you not ever have any sauce on pasta? Not really, no. Just got to try and wolf this down then. I not actually think about how much I'm eating. There's eight meatballs here. I'd have, like, one. Charlotte soon gets into the rhythm of things. Come on, my son. <laughs> Eat it. Eat it. You look full already. Not before long, though, she's flagging. Oh. I just want to go. <laughs> I just want to go. And gagging. Oh, I've got a chewy bit of cartilage. Oh. Here we go. Last mouthful. In the blue corner, Heather's cleaned her plate. But in the red corner, it's a gatto knockout for Charlotte. As she snatches defeat from the jaws of victory, her calorie-crazed cohort has some words of wisdom. And look at what you have achieved and what you have eaten instead of what you've left. I don't want to be gagging at food. It's pretty sad to say that she's left it all. I mean, she did give it a good go. I'm a bit dubious as to what's next. Morning has broken in the feeding clinic on day two of the diet swap. Knowing that I had such a hard time with eating one of Heather's meals yesterday, it's really scared me because I have to do it at least three times. I'm really dreading it. I've got a feeling it's going to be like fat fry up. Two sausages. Two of everything. Two bacon, a bit of scrambled egg and a fried egg. The thought of it just makes me feel really full up already. I wish I could feel full up by the thought of food. So what will Heather think of this pitiful portion? One slice of toast, a banana and a probiotic yoghurt. Of course, hard. Heather must stick to Charlotte's controlling and obsessive food habits. And I'd probably leave that corner because it looks a bit dry. This type of controlling mealtime routine could be an early sign of a serious eating disorder, so it's important Charlotte nips it in the bud. Are you going to eat your banana yet? Not yet, no, I'm absolutely starving. I'm trying to make it last. Oh, don't like that. I think looking at how much it is that I'm struggling to eat when I realise how much. I really do go through. Yeah, well, you saying that you're still hungry after eating that makes me realise that <coughs> it's not enough to get me going for, like, through the day. I think I'm going to shove this last bit down. Again, we had quite a bit of um, wanting to be steak. I feel like that breakfast today would actually do me for the rest of the day. Two plates cleared, it's back to the feeding clinic, where carved-up Charlotte works off the calories. Lunchtime brings a baguette bulging with tuna mayo for our super skinny. While for Heather, well, it really does take the biscuit. When I first saw what my lunch was, I wanted to slap her <laughs> for eating such a ridiculous lunch. Without swearing, <laughs> bleeping hungry. But the belly-busting, bleeping baguette isn't going down too well with Charlotte. So much more of it than uh, I could ever eat. Charlotte may be struggling, but the canned tuna in this lunch provides many essential nutrients. Phosphorus for healthy bones and teeth, selenium for her immune system, and vitamin B12, crucial to brain and nerve function. But Heather's seeing no such nutritional benefit. Come dinner time. I'm going to be ready to rip her arm off and eat whatever meat's on there. Instead of Charlotte's arm, Heather will be chomping on two small lamb chops, two potatoes and veg. But she'd rather have a bowl of... Chocolate-covered rice cereals. Drowned in full-fat milk and in case Charlotte isn't sweet enough, there's tonnes of sugar on top. Seeing Heather having to abide by her rule of always leaving some food makes 19-year-old Charlotte see how ridiculous her eating habits have become. It actually looks a bit stupid um, <laughs> to leave just that tiny amount of food. See if there's any more left on me. These lamb chops are right now. But it's not something that we have at home, because Richard's not really a lamb fan. You seem to do a lot of compromising. Richard doesn't like lamb, so you don't eat lamb. 
and 22-year-old Heather's learning to recognise her eating excuses too. From now on, I'm having some. I actually really enjoyed it, to be honest. And for the first time, Charlotte's not struggling to keep food down. I think I just had, like, this much room left. <laughs> and this is going to fill it. But if Charlotte thinks she's done munching, cue Heather's midnight microwave madness. I brought you a snack. Are you being serious? This bun is rock hard. <laughs> it is a bit weird to see somebody eating at this time of night, but in my house it's the norm. That's just going to be lying in my stomach all night now. I really didn't think there was enough space in your little body to actually store all of this. Hey, look, look, we're getting a bit more. Look, <laughs> You're getting a bit more a pinch. Heather heads off to bed, leaving Charlotte to digest her day's worth of super-sized servings. Charlotte is being bombarded with food on Heather's diet and she's finding it a real ordeal. So I need to remind her that she's here to learn valuable lessons to help her change her eating habits. The risks of 19-year-old Charlotte's under-eating are terrifying. Dr Christian wants the would-be beauty queen to face up to what her eating habits are doing to her body and realise beauty is more than skin deep. Come along in. Oh, it looks horrible. Why do you say that? It's upsetting. It's just, that's it, that's like real. That's the truth, that's disgusting. I hated seeing those photos for the first time. I've never seen anything like it. It was really shocking. I just, I just, I look ill. I don't look like a healthy 19-year-old girl. You look undernourished and tired. You've got eye bags and dark circles. Your nails are fine, but that's because you do your nails. Yeah. But my fear for you is you hide the problems that are actually there. And they're there because of your minuscule diets. If your body needs to make sacrifices in order to conserve things, hair can go, nails can go. I think you are hiding behind a facade, a mask that you apply every morning. You look quite rattled by this. Like... <laughs> like, I've just been living this massive lie and I've thought that I could do go modelling because I'm pretty enough and it's like... I'm not. I've got a really horrible body. The makeup's not the answer. Your diet is the answer. Change that, all of this will improve. It's just a shock, like... I've never seen myself like this. It's made me realise that, that, I, that I was being quite ignorant because all I was doing was trying to cover up from the outside when really the inside needs to be changed. Bad looks can be the result of a bad diet as failure to take on adequate nutrients risks dry or spotty skin, weak nails, tooth decay and hair loss. Breakfast and Charlotte, newly determined, chows down on a bumper-sized baguette whilst working mum Heather gets a Spartan slice of toast. But the slim pickings are pushing Heather to the edge. I actually feel sick because I'm that hungry. I feel like just screaming and shouting and pulling my hair out at the minute because I'm just angry at everything. And I hate feeling that. This is horrible. Heather is experiencing the feeling of true hunger for the first time in her life and she's finding the emotional effects hard to deal with. So she needs a boost to keep her motivated and to keep her heading in the right direction. So to boost Heather's meagre breakfast, Dr Christian's adding a side order of surprise. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> this is Heather's mum and her daughter. And you know why I brought them, don't you, Heather? Yeah? And I know your mum's got something to say to you. I think this is a golden opportunity for you. I'm really concerned about your health. I'm also concerned about Madison's health. I love you so much. And I'm frightened I'm going to lose you. And Maddie won't have a mum. When Heather was younger, what sort of things did she eat? Unfortunately, the wrong things. Um, I, too, was a working mum. Um, we had all the things like fish fingers and the chips and we had the deep-fat fryer. I don't want that for Madison. I 
think your mother's done something quite incredible today to be able to come forward and say, OK, I may not have fed you the right stuff, but don't you make the same mistake. I think that's amazing. It was such a shock. I never expected my mum and my daddy to turn up. Now I'm in the right frame of mind that I want to do this, then I will be taking on board what she said. Coming up, a supersized helping of shock therapy for Heather. My son is very obese and uh, I hate it because I wouldn't want him to go through what I have gone through. Anna Richardson discovers Hollywood cheats to the perfect bod. Oh, look how petite you look. And on their course of therapy to overcome anorexia, the girls face a tough challenge. I don't like showing that I have got anorexia. Over the course of this series, we've been following Rachel, Rebecca, Fiona and Elaine, who've been battling the eating disorder anorexia nervosa. One of the real gains of being anorexic for many of them is the sense of control that it gives them in a world which is otherwise feels very much out of control. They allowed us intimate access as they followed a course of practical therapy, each week facing a challenge designed to aid recovery through getting them to identify their anxieties and fears. Today's task is a visit to a spa with a back massage. Anorexia sufferers often hide their bodies away under layers of baggy clothing and avoid close physical contact, so today will be a giant step. I think it's going to be really strange seeing like a stranger see my body because I cover it up so much, you know, with clothes because I don't like showing that I have got anorexia. I know like my back and things are really, really bony and I got a little hair on my back like that. Downy hair can be a telltale sign of anorexia, where a lack of essential protein prevents the normal metabolism of fat. Anorexia leaves sufferers so used to punishing their body, they completely forget how to indulge it. Pampering is something that I never, ever do for myself at all. They may not feel that their bodies deserve to be pampered. They perhaps don't like their bodies very much. I haven't treated my body well through my anorexia. All I've been concerned with is just restricting my diet. The massage session is giving Rebecca real insight into the harm she's causing and the pleasures she's been missing out on. You literally are just abusing your body. The only thing you're driven by is just starving yourself. I just find it really strange now to actually have my body looked after. and I'm really enjoying it. For Fiona, who holds down three jobs and several sporting activities, the idea of self-indulgence is a revelation. I've never really thought to myself that I will treat myself and have a massage or go and have a facial. Hopefully I will come away having learned that it is OK for me to pamper myself. Elaine, who has lived with anorexia for 17 years, is not happy to let her mask slip entirely. Even though I'm at a health spa, I chose not to take my makeup off and sort of lay myself completely bare. I tend to kind of keep away from getting intimate with people. It's very strange to have somebody touch my body. It does feel really nice. One of the many possible symptoms of food restriction is dehydration, which can cause flaky skin. The skin on my face gets quite and flaky and dry and sore. I knew it was in effect what I was doing to myself, but you can't seem to want to stop it. But today's experience has made Rachel see that she can turn things around. Today it's just shown that you can just focus on yourself in, in a positive way, I think. The spa day has been tough for the girls, but it's also been rewarding and a crucial step towards recovery. Later, we reveal how far they've come with a farewell meal together. When I saw the plates coming in, I thought they were not far off being flying saucers the size <laughs> of them. Supersized 22-year-old Heather and super skinny 19-year-old Charlotte are two young women who have agreed to swap their polar extreme eating habits. You are hiding behind. Dr. Christian has taught super skinny Charlotte that beauty is more than skin deep and reminded Heather she needs to break the supersized habit of generations. It's the final day of the swap. Heather seemed affected by the surprise visit from her mum and daughter. But to hammer home the urgency of the changes she must make, Dr Jesson has someone else he wants 20 Stone Heather to meet. Hello, this is Lisa. Okay. Hiya, Lisa. Hi, dear. Pleased to meet you. And you. Lisa weighed the same as Heather at her age. 
Now 46 and once weighing 27 stone, we've been following Lisa for the last eight weeks as she's undergone life-threatening surgery in a final attempt to get her weight in check. She had two-thirds of her stomach removed and will be on a strict liquid-only diet for the next three months. Lisa will never be able to eat normally again. How are you feeling now? I'm in a lot of pain and I can't sleep. I have to sleep in a chair. Heather's fear is passing bad habits onto her daughter and she's right to be worried. One of the things that I've been nagging Heather about is that she has a little girl called Madison. She's 16 months and I'm really concerned that Madison is going to be picking up all mum's bad eating habits. My son is very obese and uh, I hate it because I wouldn't want him to go through what I have, go have gone through. Why do you think he is obese? My fault. You think so? Yes, yeah. It's what I, what I have, I give them. After meeting Lisa today, it's, it's hit her. I know exactly how she feels about her son and the fact that she's, she believes that she's put her son in that position, which is how I feel about Maddie. I know Maddie's only 16 months old. But if I was to carry on, then Maddie could be like that. It's a wake-up call for Heather. But four weeks after her operation, Lisa is finally losing weight. You've lost more than 27 kilograms. That's four stone, three pounds. And her waist, that was once greater than her height, has dropped dramatically. You've lost what, that was my waist? this much off your waist. Lovely. I'm so pleased with myself and it gave me, you know, a longer lifespan. I've got a grandchild coming and, you know, at least I'll be able to be healthier. And she's pleased that she's had the opportunity to inspire eight other supersizers to change their ways. I think it gives you that little bit of boost, you know, and I think I can help them. With the day's events weighing heavily on Heather, there's one final meal in the feeding clinic, and it's a proper dinner. Although the portion size is too tiny, it is nutritionally balanced, with complex carbohydrates in the mashed potato, protein in the minced beef, and essential vitamins and minerals in the fresh vegetables. Charlotte, on the other hand, has a number of issues with her meal. 30 of anything, apart from peas, just sounds terrible. I actually texted my mum and I said, I think I've got the 30 sausage rolls. And she said, don't you mean three? And I was like, no, 30. Eating 30 sausage rolls is by no means ideal, but by exposing each other to their extreme eating habits, they'll see how to make important changes for a healthier diet. Let's get going. <laughs> But that's not the only meal dominated by numbers. I only have the same size piece every time. Um, and it's like usually around 10 centimetres by 6 centimetres. You have actually measured that? I would leave about a quarter of that, though. I think Charlotte's eating habits are very, very weird. Because it is very, very strange to have the same thing and leave the same amounts. I've managed to eat 15, so I think I'm going to pop the button open. Try and fit in the rest. As they reach the end of the swap, both these young women are realising how extreme their habits with food are. I think the whole emotional roller coaster of everything that's going on has made me realise what it is that I'm doing to not only me but Maddie as well. Me leaving bits of food and overanalyzing things was a bit compulsive. Um, so it's a habit that I definitely want to break. It's the end of the swap. Time for Dr Christian to give Heather and Charlotte their 12-week healthy eating plans. How's it been? Have you enjoyed it? Uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been um, a fantastic opportunity. And I'm now going to go home and have a lot of smaller portions. And what about you, Charlotte? I've definitely changed in the fact that I'm not going to over-analyse and overthink my food too much. Yeah, I think you thought too, too much and you didn't really think at all. And now we've addressed that balance, I think it's going yeah. to get much, much better. So everything that you need now for your diet plans are all in here. And I have to say, I'm really looking forward to seeing you two in 12 weeks' time. It's been such a challenge, but I have really enjoyed finding out about myself and having to push myself. And I'm just really looking forward to going back home and starting my new diet. 
I've learned that it just looks ridiculous to leave a tiny bit of food. I've learned a lot about myself and how I act around food, um, which I'll be taking home and doing something about it. Me, Maddie and Richard will certainly be changing our eating habits and there's going to be a lot more home-cooked food. It's like a weight's being lifted knowing that I'm going to go home and she's not going to be like me. Eight weeks ago, these four girls agreed to a course of therapy to tackle their eating disorder, anorexia nervosa. They've undergone tasks that challenge the typical habits of anorexia, learning yoga to counter obsessive exercising, eating takeaways to relinquish controlling eating habits, and cooking to broaden their culinary horizons, all under the guidance of eating disorder specialist Ursula Philpot. You know, that's sort of a, a chunky... Today, they face their biggest challenge yet, to order and eat several courses at a restaurant. For anorexia sufferers, eating out and relinquishing control of the contents of the exact meal they're eating can be a massive step to recovery. They have to choose from a menu. It will be out of their control. They've no idea what the food's going to come like, what kind of portion it's going to come like. Rachel embraces the task wholeheartedly. And then for Maine, I'm going to challenge myself and have a vegetable and pesto lasagna. Pasta has been my fear food. That is one thing I cut out. Elaine, who has suffered anorexia for 17 years, is feeling big changes. Whereas previously I'd get a bit kind of horrified and unsure of what I was going to eat and how many calories were in it, I'm less preoccupied with that sort of thing now and more looking forward to eating. She opts for two courses straight off. Can I have the scallops, please, to start? And I'm going to go with the uh, smoked haddock for a main course. Her choice of unfamiliar food shows recovery has begun. I wouldn't normally have something with a sauce. Goes against everything that was normal to me, so I'm looking forward to tasting it. Although Fiona was eating at meal times, her portion sizes were extremely small. Now that's changing. If you compare the fish element of what I've got today, the portion size compared to what I had that first week, there is a big difference. difference. I think it's so nice to see everybody eating a healthy, balanced meal and actually enjoying it as well, because I think that is the key. This meal has got Rebecca to face up to her food fears and overcome them. When I saw the plates coming in, I thought they were not far off being flying saucers the size <laughs> of them, so I was like, oh, whoa. But the food actually on it is fine. The girls are enjoying the food. And you're enjoying the flavours. Really, really enjoying it. And their achievements. It's just a huge step, and I'm just so proud of, I think, myself and everybody here that we've actually, you know, we can do this, looking back how we did, you know, when we started. Eight weeks ago, I just remember when we were all sat around having our sort of typical meals, just thinking about the contrast. I mean, if you look at the plates now with how they were eight weeks ago. They even stretch themselves to try dessert and are enjoying the sweetness of life once more. I feel as though I've been given a second chance, really enjoying life again and just seeing all the good things that I can do without my eating disorder. Physically, I just feel so, so much better. I've got energy, I just feel alive. Like before, my whole life was driven around food. There is life after an eating disorder. Life doesn't actually stop. Life begins when you say goodbye to the eating disorder. People suffering eating disorders are often resistant to change, and what we've managed over the last eight weeks is to sow the seeds of change for these girls. There is still a long way to go, and as they enjoy some celebratory liquid calories, Elaine sums up the feelings of the group. I don't want to lose any more of my life just having all these hang-ups and issues around food. I'm absolutely ready to say goodbye to anorexia. Cheers. <laughs> It's been six weeks since super skinny Charlotte and super size Heather left the feeding clinic. They've been following bespoke eating plans to help them get the results they really need. Heather's plan involves reducing her portion sizes, taking food into work so she's not tempted by the high fat salt options in the staff canteen and more home cooking so she's not reliant on microwave meals and her local takeaway. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of fresh fruits. So we've got grapes and some tatsumas. And then instead of the processed foods, I've got things like um, fresh prawns, and then um, we have lots of light yogurts as well, instead of um, the ice cream and chocolate. 
As Heather's morbidly obese, she needs to cut calories slowly, so her diet plan is based around consuming 2,500 calories a day, gradually reducing this to 2,000 a day over time. And daughter Madison is benefiting from the diet swap too, with Heather passing on her new healthy habits. Wow! Super skinny Charlotte's challenge involves gradually increasing her portions so her stomach gets used to adult-sized meals, eating three regular meals and three snacks a day and making sure she finishes everything on her plate. I love to finish all my meals now, especially because my mum's always like, yeah, you did it. I'm thinking about it in a different way. I'm thinking, eat it all. Even if I'm really, really full up, I will make myself just think, just, just eat it, do it, and then it's done. To enable her to gain a pound a week in weight, she'll be taking in 2,000 calories a day. Super Size and Super Skinny will return to the feeding clinic in six weeks' time for their final weigh-in, and we'll see those results later. Coming up, Anna investigates the fast-track fakes to a Hollywood skinny body. So that's the arm I should have been born with. I love digital liposuction <laughs> already. And the big weigh-in. Have Super Skinny and Super Size finally got their eating habits on track? Guys, come on in and meet each other. Over the series, I've been in LA investigating the Hollywood obsession with the perfect body. Now I'm stepping into the shoes of a busy celeb for the day to really get under the skin of being skinny in LA. I have an important photo shoot lined up with photographer to the famous Michael Segal, who snapped the likes of Kate Hudson and Antonio Banderas. So what do busy Hollywood stars do when they don't have time for dodgy surgery or crank diets? They go for some real LA magic. First stop, I do what any self-respecting satin-skinned starlet would do. All right, excuse me. <laughs> Don a giant baby grow and get suckered by a vacuum-powered roller. It's called endomology. Is that too strong? No, that's, that's actually strangely nice. It's claimed the action of the machine eliminates toxins to restore smoothness and reduce fat cells. I'm assured it has a star-studded fan base, but my therapist is not name-dropping. Which people like to have this done? I am not allowed to oh, say that they are. Oh, jeez. And because my sessions at the gym have been a little erratic, it's time for a sculpting spray tan, specifically targeted to create artificial shadows and give the impression of muscle tone. I still don't look like Angelina Jolie, so six hours in hair and makeup, and my star stylists have lined me up a figure-reducing magic dress. Here we have the Hervé Leger dress. That is short. I would, I would never wear a short. You can't be scared of this. This is great. This is like the ultimate slimming and just flattering dress. I'm scared by how minuscule this looks, but it's got star credentials. Even Catherine Zeta-Jones and Christina Aguilera have been suckered into this baby. You look so skinny right here. Yeah. You know, look at that. Like, right here. Look at how thin you look. Pummeled, scrubbed and squeezed, I'm ready for my close-up. And I've even got a bit of L.A. canine arm candy. Bow wow. Perfect. That's it. Oh, and I can feel myself falling for this million-dollar treatment. This is a very, very weird feeling. Being in L.A. and having hundreds of people primping and preening and tweaking and lifting and sucking just to get one shot. But now it's time for the real fast-track fakery. This is L.A.'s most pain-free workout to skinniness. Meet my new digital trainer, photo surgeon Joe Paleo. I have my photo shoot earlier on. You have two photos here. These are the raw ingredients. Tell me what you think. Well, the biggest flaw is that your breasts look massive. What I could do is take your top from the other photo and place it over that one. Oh, or wow. Other things I could do is your arms look pretty hefty mm -hmm. there, so mm -hmm. I could use a tool that's called Liquify. So that's the arm I should have been born with. I love digital liposuction <laughs> already. I could even go further and push in your waist mm, here. Please do. You give me the gym body I've always <laughs> dreamed of. The pictures we see of big A-list stars, mm -hmm. that is not what they really look like. They have been retouched to within an inch of their lives. I would say 99%, 99.9% of the time. This process is hideous. It's making me look at these images in a whole new way. 
LA's revealed the extremes people go to to achieve the perfect bod. I've seen surgery. Oh, my God. Visited a fat camp. That was knackering. And joined the LA mums desperate to regain their pre-baby bodies. Down and up, let's do ten more. There's a lot of pressure to sort of snap yeah. back quickly. I've realised that to look this good in this town is all just a con. Twelve weeks ago, super-sized Heather and super-skinny Charlotte swapped their destructive diets for five days in a bid to change their extreme habits with food. Today, they return for a final weigh-in. But before they get on the scales, they come face-to-face -face again for the first time in three months. Guys, come on in and meet each other. Heather, Charlotte. Oh, my God! You look amazing. They've both worked hard at their new healthy, balanced diet plans, but has it paid off? Previously, Charlotte weighed a dangerously low six stone three pounds. Now, you're a whopping six stone 13. <gasps> You've put on 10 pounds, which is extraordinary. Why? And the would-be glamour model is also getting some longed-for curves, putting two and a half inches on her waist and one inch on each leg and arm. I'm more plump, that's my word. My face is more plump and my bum is more plump. Heather, it's your turn. Comfort eater Heather weighed in at a morbidly obese 20 stone. You are 18 stone 10. <laughs> You've gone down one stone four pounds. Are you happy? That's fantastic. Heather has also lost two inches from her waist and an inch from each thigh and arm. My little sister, she's like, oh my God, look at your arms. And I'm like, well, what's the matter? She says, your bingo wings have shrunk. I even feel a bit sexy as well. <laughs> and even your little daughter now, Madison, is benefiting, isn't she? Definitely. There's um, no chocolate in the house anymore. She's um, always foraging around in the fridge for fruit. And um, she just, I don't know, she seems to have more energy. You better look healthy and glowing. And it's really obvious that you've taken on board all that advice. It's working for you spectacularly well. I'm glad I realised that I do actually have quite a bad attitude towards food. It wasn't that important to me. And I've realised that now it is. I'm definitely going to keep it up because I still want to gain more weight. It's just made me realise that having the proper diet is doing everything that I want to do with my body and it's making me better inside and outside. My body's changed quite a bit. I've even had to go out and buy um, some new jeans because my other ones were far too big. I feel fantastic. I feel much better in myself, um, a lot healthier. I've got more energy to chase around after Madison. The future for me is to stick to my diet plan and keep the family on the diet plan and lose even more weight. If you have a child who is overweight or underweight and would like to appear in the next series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, go to channel4.com forward slash take part. For a healthy attitude to diet, try the Super Size vs Super Skinny Take Control of Your Weight book, available at channel4.com slash shop. Well, tomorrow at 8, Phil and Kirsty revisit a couple who were planning to move to a fabulous home but without the fabulous cost. Next on 4, a banquet fit for celebrities, Heston's Medieval Feast.